Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Probability Measures, and here we're going to look at the monotone class theorem. Theorem is this, let F be a field of subsets of omega, and C be a class of subsets of omega that is monotone. And that means if, you know, AN is in C and AN increases to A or it decreases to A, then A also has to be in C. Now, if F, the field of subsets of omega, is part of this monotone class, then the sigma field generated by that field is also a subset of that monotone class. <clears throat> and let's prove it. <laughs> Here, we're going to prove it in five steps. And the outline is this. So let's let M equal M of F. Now that means it's the smallest monotone class containing all sets of F. Now we, we're going to show that M is equal to sigma of F. So the, the smallest sigma field generated by F and the smallest monotone class generated by F are equal. And since the sigma field, since the sigma field is a monotone class, right, it's closed under, you know, infinite unions, infinite intersections, we have that M is a subset of this sigma field, right? If it's a monotone class, that's the minimum monotone class, that has to be true. Now, we will show that M is a sigma field, and that means that this relationship has to hold, right? If M is a sigma field containing F, and this is the minimum sigma field containing F. It has to be a subset. But they can't be subsets of each other. They have to be equal. And if they're equal, and this is the minimum monotone class, then it has to be a subset of that monotone class. All right. First, let, uh, we need to show that omega is in M. And since omega is in F, which is a subset of M, then it has to be an M. Now part two, we're going to show it closed under complements. So if A is in this monotone class, then A complement is in the monotone class. That's what we want to show. So let, let's let A be in M, you know, any set in M, and we're going to define this new set called M of A, which is a function of this A, to be this. It's all the other sets in M, the, the minimum monotone class containing the sigma or the field F, such that if these intersections are in M, then B is also in, you know, M of A. So note that F is in M of A, since F is a field, and you're right, because when we this goes through all sets in M, and some of those sets are in F. But, and then when we cycle through all the other sets of M, we're going to get to the ones that are in F. And since F is a field, these also have to be in here, which then makes F a subset of, you know, a subset of M. Now, M of, M of A is a subset of M, right? We're creating M of A on conditions that that may or may not include all sets of M, right? So it has to be a subset of M. Now let's let AN be an element of M of A, such that AN increases to A or, right? And so that implies that AN complement decreases to AN complement. Now since AN and AN complement are in M of A, right? See, and this is true because we are assuming that AN is in MMA, right? So that means that this has to hold when we stick AN in there. But we know that omega is in there, right? And if we put omega, you know, when we cycle through other sets of M, omega is one of them. And omega A is, you know, AN is AN. Omega complements the empty set, so the empty set's in it, and and this has to be in it, right? We're requiring it. We're assuming that A in is in here, so that means that this set is in here. But when we when this is omega, that's just A complement. So that says you know A in complement. So that says both of those are in there, and since A in and A in complement are increasing decreasing sets with 
with uh, M monotone, that means that A and A complement have to be in M, script M. This implies that A and A complement are in M of A. Right? Because if we know A and A complement are in M, right, then when we get to this, that it has to be in M of A. Now that may take some reasoning, you know, on your part, but that's true. Now MA, but that means MA is a monotone class. So, and so if MA is a monotone class that contains F, that means the, you know, script M is a subset of it because this is the minimum monotone field that contains F. But wait, we said that MA was a subset of M, but they can't be subsets of each other. That means they're equal. So that means that, that M is closed under complementation. So show M is closed under finite unions. Let's fix an A that's in the field F, which we know is a subset of M, the script M, which is the minimum monotone class that contains F. Now, since F is a uh, field, that means F is in this MA, where A is fixed in F, right? So we're up here, and A is in F, and then eventually we'll get to sets that are also in F, and since F is a field, these are all in, in, in M, which means that all the sets of F are in MA. You know, when we restrict it to that, to being in the field F. Now let's let B in be an element of MA such that it's an increasing set to B. Now we have B, A in, intersect A in. They're all in this uh, uh, script M, which is the minimum monotone class that contains F. This for all in. This is an increasing sequence. A intersect B in is an increasing sequence to A intersect B. And since M is a monotone class, that has to be in there, right? Because these are in M, so its limit has to be in, because it's a monotone class. So B is in M, right? Because it's a monotone class. That And A intersect B is in M. So thus B is in MA. And MA is closed, so MA is closed under increasing unions. Now we can go through a similar argument to say that it's uh, closed under, you know, arguments for decreasing intersections. So it's the same argument. So MA is a monotone class. But if MA is a monotone class, that means script M, the minimum monotone class that contains F, has to be a subset. But wait, we said this was a subset of that, so they have to equal. Therefore, since MA is closed under, you know, finite unions and intersections, that means M is. So therefore, M is closed under finite unions. Now, part four, five, M is a field, right? It, it contains omega. It's closed under complementation. It's closed under finite unions. And it's a monotone class, right? M is a monotone class. So thus, M is a sigma field. But since M is a sigma field, then the minimum sigma field containing F has to be a subset of it. But the sigma field generated by F is a monotone class, so it has to be a subset of that. Well, they can't be subsets of each other. That implies that they're equal. And then the proof is complete by showing that since these two are equal, they have to be subsets of C, which is a monotone class. Because this is the minimum monotone class containing F, and that's the minimum sigma field containing F. So therefore, it's done. Now, here's a quick example why the monotone class theorem fails when F is not a field. So let's let F be all intervals of the real number line. So that means F contains the sets that look like this, you know, open intervals, closed intervals, any, any combination. So X and Y are in the real number line, and we're requiring that x be strictly less than y. So now look at a, the interval x, y complement is this form, but the, 
but this form is not part of F. We so it's not an element of it. So it's not closed under complementation. Thus, F is not a field. But let's let X in be increasing to X or decreasing to X. Now remember that we're requiring X to be strictly less than Y. And if we look at all of these sets, you know, the limit of these sets, and this is, you know, this is for all these. They're also in F, right? You get an interval back, right? And since we're requiring that X be strictly less than Y, then you know none of these sets will limit to a point. So all of these are intervals that are back in F. So F is a monotone class. So F is equal to this minimum monotone class because it's it's it, it's itself. But note that the minimum sigma field generated by F is the Borel set, where B of R is the Borel set. And the Borel set is clearly not a subset of this mono, the minimum monotone class generated by F, which is F, right? The sigma field generated by F is, is a strictly larger class. They're not equal. So hence, the monotone class theorem fails. Well, that's all I have for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.